Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're glad you could join us once again. It's always good to connect with our friends every week, and we're so glad that you're here with us. We hope you're having a cup of hot tea or cocoa or coffee uh, this morning, as we are too. Yes, we love drinking tea. Of course, you all know that. We blend all of our own organic teas here, and our Gray's Garden tea is one that we love, that we love kicking mm -hmm. off our day with, and it's always nice to have something warm on a chilly morning. And this one, I like to add a little drop of vanilla cream stevia to it. Yes. Makes it really smooth. That's Just so a little yummy. trick. <laughs> Today is a full moon. Tonight's a full moon. And we recognize the day before and the day after as being the full moon. So that's like three days in a row that we can celebrate the full moon. And I'd like to read a little bit from the January chapter about the January full moon. And it says, I hear the coyotes howling outside my home in the woods close by. They form their circle and yip and howl with each other. It is the full moon. It is well documented that the moon affects the tides, people's state of mind, and the germination and growing of seeds. I find it interesting to learn about the waxing and waning moons and everything in between, but most of all about the full moon and the names used for them throughout history. The January full moon is called the wolf moon. This moon appeared when the wolves howled in hunger outside the villages, as it was more difficult for the wolves and the people to find food in the bitter cold and the deep snows of January. This full moon is also known as the cold moon. How appropriate is that? The moon after Yule, very cold moon. Cold that makes the trees crack moon. Cold night moon. And in our locality, the Osage Indians called it the moon stands alone. Mm. Mm. I love that. You too. Yeah. We've had a lot of fog just lately, so I'm hopeful that we can see, see a moon. The full moon. <laughs> For sure. See a moon tonight. And we love working with the full moon energy, or any, all of the moon energy, yes. the, the, the cycles of the moon. It's part of what we incorporate into mm -hmm. our home herbalism teachings for our students and that we work with ourselves as well. And the full moon is a time of fruition and a lot of times it's time that we'll decant tinctures or decant oils mm -hmm. that we have infused it's a great way to time things like tinctures that take six weeks so you go you start at the new moon and you go full moon to full moon and there you've got your six weeks it works really mm -hmm. well that way and in nice weather we make our full moon tea yes so the full moon sure. is quite important to us yeah we will yes. look forward to that in the summertime yes <laughs> well we've had a little break in our weather which is wonderful because we broke records. For, for, it's been 30 years since we've been this cold. The bitter cold has just hung on. Yeah. And I do believe that that creates a, a more uh, stressful and lonely time in our lives when we can't get out like we used to, especially some of us can't. And many of us don't want to because the bitter cold is it's, right. it's really not fit for man or beast to be out in. <laughs> and so we stay inside. We had to cancel meetings. We yes. had to cancel appointments. Uh, many had frozen pipes. My lane was blocked with snow. <laughs> uh, it it was yeah. just unreal. So yeah, and we did. I mean, we, and we're originally from Nebraska, so and we have nothing to complain about <laughs> because we know our friends up in Nebraska and other places further north had it much much worse than we did. Mm -hmm. So grateful for small blessings. <laughs> we are normally we have a mild winter, so I believe we're yeah. a little bit spoiled too. For sure. Yes. But it is a time to uh, pull in, and when the weather is that bitter cold, and the snow comes down several days in a, in a row, and so I call it wintering in place. Oh, I like that. I need to stay put. It's too dangerous for me to go out, yeah. and so I winter inside. I do the things that need to be done. I finished up a few projects. I read a few books. I'm on, I am on. just finished my fourth book for January, and that's been a good thing because I do love to read and I normally don't find a lot of time to read. Were there any in particular that you really like? It's by Abraham Verghese and his first one was Cutting from Stone and I enjoyed that one a lot. And reading a, a historical novel, this is based in India, gives us a lot of knowledge about an area, another mm -hmm. culture, which I find super interesting and, and it's important that we do learn about different things sure. and even the history as we come through. This covered about a 75 year span of life. And so there are about four storylines in this one. And this one is called The Covenant of Waters, of Water, I believe it's without S on the end. It is 700 pages long and I just finished it. It's too heavy to hold in my hand, so I set it on a pillow in my lap. <laughs> 
in order to read it. It goes quite a quite fast. That's a hefty book. It's a pages. very hefty book. <laughs> and with four storylines, you really had to pay attention to it. And they all come together at the end. Uh -huh. And so there was a time in there towards the end, I thought, ah, uh, I don't know here. It's going getting kind of long. But it's all important. In mm. that, and he's a very excellent storyteller. You have to be to make a 700-page <laughs> yes. book that people stick with, for yes. sure. Oh, yes. And so uh, and that one I read in three days. Oh, my goodness. I love a long <laughs> book if it's really good because the, when a book is good, you don't want it to end anyway. That's right. And, and you know, yeah. And a good book, I think, makes you think afterwards sure. on things. It, it goes around in your mind. Mm -hmm. There are things in it you don't forget and things I ponder. That's one of the things. I think in I've a, been doing. I think in a book, you, you, I mean, a good book, you become a good fiction book. You become very attached to those characters. That's like, it, mm -hmm. I when I was an English read and reading teacher, and so I love literature and I love teaching through literature. And mm -hmm. I had a, uh, I know one quote on my classroom wall. I always put up there: "Fiction reveals truth, reality obscures." And I think that that's very mm -hmm. true because I think <clears throat> through fiction which I also call the original virtual reality because, you know, the virtual reality, I think of, you know, kids want VR headsets to like immerse themselves in virtual reality. I'm like, just read a good book. You are in virtual reality if you're reading mm -hmm. a good book mm -hmm. because you are transported. And a, I think you're right. A good fiction book reveals truths that we don't otherwise sometimes think about or see. So I think that's wonderful. And it's almost like traveling to another country, although, sure. I'm, although I haven't traveled, and I no longer do travel. So it yeah. is, uh, which is another wonderful that. aspect of it. Well, anyway, this time of the year, I find myself craving carbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do try to be low carb, but yeah, there's a book... Oh. There's a book that I started reading. I haven't finished it yet, but it's called Your Body Wants You to Be Fat. <laughs> and well, the idea is that, that, I mean, it's part of our survival mechanism is that carbs, we crave carbs in the wintertime because that's how our body puts on weight. And that is how it, we survived winters. It's because that extra <laughs> fat is food, is fuel. And so when you are in ketosis, which our ancestors would have been during the winter months because they were, you know, it was very lean times, they would be absorbing that fat as a fuel into their body. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree. I've been craving carbs too. <laughs> well, I think genetics have a lot to do with it also in many ways. Yeah, that with, could with be, our, for sure. Our, in our ancestors how, or how in our family line, how how we all looked and sure seem to inherit some of those aspects of it. But yes, and I do think it's a little uh, counterintuitive or interesting because in the beginning of the year, we all, our new year, we want to put down as a goal to lose some weight. Right. January is not the best time and to try January to do that. And January is not, no. not at no. all. <laughs> That's because, yeah, in January, we are in the depths yeah. of carb cravings, so trying to put off weight is mm -hmm. not, yeah, it may, you're right, counterintuitive. It's, it's harder to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we give ourselves grace mm -hmm. and also to be kind to ourselves. We're kind to other people. Let's be kind to ourselves also. So January, as I said before, could be stressful. It can be lonely, especially when you're cooped up inside. And for anyone who's older, it certainly is. So I believe just give ourselves a little bit of grace is a good thing. I love that word too. I think grace is... It's an important word as we enter into the mm -hmm. new year. And it's time to make soups, of course, too. But these are all comfort foods. Yes. What is your favorite comfort food? Mm, yes. Do you find yourself craving <laughs> carbs, too? Like yes. We do. <laughs> Turn to the dark chocolate, which we love. Yeah, for sure. What's your favorite comfort food? I said I might grab a cookie. Yeah. A, a ginger cookie. A ginger cookie. Those are mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. And I, mine is tapioca. I have such fond. Really? I think it's part of it is, and like you said, not just genetics even, but I think part of there, we have emotional connections to food. My yes. memory of tapioca was, you know, it, it oh. takes like 20 minutes to make. Yeah. And it would always be a special evening when mm -hmm. you would make tapioca when we were kids. You know, it would be time when uh, the family was gathered together. We were yes. maybe going to watch a movie together or something. And we'd get warm tapioca with little chocolate, mini chocolate chips in it. And I just... I have such good memories of that, and it's really a high carb food, but man, I crave it in the wintertime. So I have made it a couple times this winter mm -hmm. just because I just had to give in, give myself some grace, and go. It's you know. okay. 
It is okay. It is in okay. moderation, as long yes. as your health will allow mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I, I agree. The time may come when you can't have it. No. So that's for sure. Enjoy it while you can. <laughs> that's what my mother always used to say. Uh, anyway, I think you have a class you're working on right now you yes. might want to share. Yes. I, my tarot master class is enrolling right now. It only enrolls once a year. It's a 12-week program if you've ever wanted to learn to read tarot like a pro and be confident doing that. That's what we do. It's a program that's unlike any other program. It combines the three keys to reading tarot confidently and weaves them together in this program. And that's foundation, learning the foundation of tarot as a system, intuition, learning how to really access your intuition and use it during a reading, and also practice. And that's one of the keys is to actually practice reading tarot with other people. And I found always that that is more effective with other tarot enthusiasts than it is actually trying to give a tarot reading to someone who is expecting you to give them a, a good mm -hmm. reading. When you're reading tarot with other tarot enthusiasts or other tarot learners, you're helping each other out to figure out what that reading might mean. And I know some people sometimes have a little uh, trepidation about the tarot. If you watch a television show or a movie and they show the tarot, you're going to end up for sure seeing three cards and they are the scary cards of tarot. <laughs> and that's death, the devil, and the tower usually. And the hanged one is sometimes in there too. And they probably look familiar because those are the scary cards, which they're not really scary. Tarot was actually designed as a card playing game back in the 1400s. And then in the early 1900s, the Rider Waite Smith deck, which all modern tarot decks uh, are based on, was created. And it's a, actually a, a system that's based in Judeo Christianity. You can see that from a lot of the images, but it's, it's meant to tell a story. And the story is meant to spark insight. Tarot is really a way to spark insight, to help you see things maybe that you're not seeing. And I think it's an amazing tool. I've had wonderful experiences in my own life. Doing a tarot reading and having it show me things that I maybe wasn't seeing about a situation and allowing then myself to go ahead and be proactive in that situation in ways that I wouldn't have thought about otherwise. And so it's a wonderful tool. If you're interested at all in learning about it, you can go to the website for the class and learn more. If you have any questions, you can ask me and I'll post a link down in the comments for the class. Well, in the shop, uh, we've done up our display and it has snow people in it. Now we used to call them snowmen, but now we need to be gender neutral. General neutral. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be general neutral on this and uh, we call them snow people. And I wanted to share one of my little snow people from my house. And this is what I have at my little display at home. And I keep it out from December through February because those are winter months. And this is a little snowman a friend had made for me uh, way back when. And it's one of my very favorite little ones. It's adorable. This is one that uh, a friend of mine made for me. And, and it's made with crumpled up tin foil. Now, maybe some of you made them back when, but this is a great project, I think, for kids that are seven, eight, nine years of old. You old bet. Or uh, older. Or I love older. paper. I love paper mache. Well, we love working with things. <laughs> well, this, and this is paper mache over crumpled tin foil. So make your shape out of crumpled tin foil and then put the paper mache a layer or two on top of it, smooth it out. When it's dry, thoroughly dry, then paint it. Oh, I and, love that. and keep your little holes in, in the side you're out of with an ice pick so you can put your, your nose into it and the little branches. Twig arms. Adorable. But he's just so sweet. So, Super sweet. And then we'll be adding hearts now also to our, to our display. display. yes. And that'll be, of course, because February, February is coming. Is coming. Yes. Yeah, and that's the time of year. That's right. And also in February, we're going to be marking down our most of our tarot and oracle decks significantly, mm -hmm. uh, trying to clear out some stock. And so, so we if, can add more. If we can add more in February, we're open the first three Fridays and Saturdays in February. That would be part of some of the wonderful things we will be offering. We always appreciate it when you come and stop by and join us for a cup of tea at our tea chats. Please do be sure to click the like button. And if you have something to say, to add, just to even say, you know, what your favorite comfort foods, we would love yes. to hear about that. And especially if you have a recipe, please add that in the comments below. The, doing those things, clicking the like button and commenting and even sharing if you 
feel like doing that. We always really appreciate that. That's how people find out about us. That helps our algorithm and it also helps your algorithm because if you don't do that, then pretty soon you don't see us anymore. And so that's part we of how the you. algorithm- We miss you a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's how the algorithm works on Facebook mm -hmm. is that you know they, they pay attention and that they show you more of what you engage with. Uh, I would like to have us end with a little quote mm -hmm. of the January chapter and it's by John Boswell. It says, winter, a lingering season. It is a time to gather golden moments, embark upon a sentimental journey, and enjoy every idle hour. Mm. Yes. Yes. So we hope you enjoy all of your hours too. For sure. Have a great week. And we'll see you next week. Good earth blessings to you. Mm.